Well, Jason, you've just finished your first season on Chicago PD for NBC. You're that kind of actor before this series that ever, I'm sure people would walk up and go, I know you from somewhere, but I don't know exactly where. But here's a big leading role chance on a major network series. What's that? What's the yeah. change been like for you, just even in terms of recognition? Um, well, you know, it's particularly in Chicago where the show is kind of a, a wildfire. And, you know, they have a proprietary feeling about it. It's, uh, it's a lot of attention. You started this character uh, recurring on Chicago Fire. Was the intention yeah. all along to spin you off into your own series, or did that just come about uh, along the way? I I think that's a really a question for Dick Wolf, but because um, I've, I've 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 kind of heard both stories, but uh, you know it's very flattering and gratifying that they believed in me either way, and. Uh, it's a it's a lot of work and a lot of fun. So uh, I don't know whether it was just because the the character on fire did very well. Apparently the numbers went up. People found him interesting. He's certainly interesting to play and kind of chase this guy. Uh, but uh, I guess uh, Dick and uh, Bob Greenblatt thought. It might be a, a good idea. We did a little kind of a backdoor pilot, which was really good, and uh, which was, I guess, just a, it was one of the last episodes of the first season of Chicago Fire, which was kind of our backdoor pilot. And uh, they picked it up, and, uh, and here we are, running along. You know, a lot of shows have tried to do spinoffs over the years. Some have been successful and some have not. What has made this one work? What's the secret to your... Uh, show uh, being successful whereas others have failed? You know, if I could actually answer that question, I'd probably be the richest man in Hollywood. But uh, uh, I really don't know. I mean, I, listen, I, I, here's how I look at it. And whether I'm doing an episode of Chicago Fire or uh, a character on a show that's our show or whether I'm the lead, it's all the same, really. It's, you know, you try to find the character within the story, and, and it's for them. It, I think one of the traps is you try to think too much about yourself. I call it getting interesting. And, and I, not only is that a personally not a, a very happy place, but it's also, I think, creatively a little stifling. And I, I try to look at it as something that we're giving it for you. So I look at it like, let's say you knit a sweater for your aunt for Christmas. And so you spend a lot of time and you put a lot of love into it and you make it and you, you, you think of her and here it is and then you wrap it up, put a ribbon around it and you give it on Christmas. And when she opens it, hopefully she likes it, you know. But it, it's still for her and it's a great feeling if you give her, you know, something that she adores and wears all the time. But it, it, it's 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 kind of it's it's like that for me, you know. It's just you know I'm trying to trying to trying to make something that people like, you know, that it's enjoyable, maybe even useful at some point. Well, beyond the mass audience, the regular folks at home that watch, what has been the reaction yeah. among Chicago police officers? What have they said to you about it? Well, I've talked to a lot of them, and you know, every extra in any police scene is an actual Chicago police officer. And one of the, and, I, and our, we always have a real Chicago police officer technical advisor, usually this guy named Brian Luce, who's a, uh, he's really kind of a genius. Um, and just because creatively, not only technically, he's, he's awesome. So, uh, and he helps with a lot of the stories. He's, he's really an integral part of the show, but. He, uh, the, 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 the reaction has been that they really, really, really find it believable and real. And one of the most kind of interesting, I don't know if it makes you happy or not, but it certainly is gratifying in a lot of ways. But a lot of cops have told me, boy, I'd work for Void any day, which is interesting. So, yeah, that is good. You know, it isn't real. Yeah. So we're, we're doing our best to make it as real as possible within the confines of network television. 
Well, as the show started, you there are a lot of implications about your character. We don't really exactly know, maybe you do uh, as the actor, but exactly what's going on here. Is he shady? Is he not shady? Uh, has he just been undercover? I mean, what, what are your thoughts on, on the, the role itself? Well, I, you know, a lot of people find him very complex and complicated. And I've always said that he's the simplest guy I've ever played. He's, he's very direct, he's very honest, and he's very present. I, I just say, you know, the only complication is if he's hungry, he eats. If he's tired, he sleeps. And if you're in his way, you know, you probably better get out of the way because he is going to get to point B. So uh, I, 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 all I can do is play a guy in a moment doing what he thinks is right. And that's true of, you know, a guy in a white hat or a, or a black hat. You know, you, I play the guy from his viewpoint, doing what he thinks is right for his own purposes. So it's up to the audience to decide whether he's good or bad. And I think that's kind of what is interesting about the show, certainly about this character, is that I, 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 I just, you know, even if, you, who's the worst guy in history? Hitler. You know, if I'm going to play Hitler, I can't play him as a bad guy. I have to take on his viewpoint. You know, and he's the only guy who's got the guts to get rid of all these Jews and, and take over the world, you know. And, and that's what he thinks is right. You know, for whatever insane psychopathic reason, it's still his logic. So I don't get into a lot of judgment. I personally think that he's uh, got a lot of great qualities, Hank, when he's honest. or He's not... I, I, I guess I can't say this word. I'm thinking of him on television. Well, he's not full of it. You know, he's very, he's very, you know, what you see is what you get. He's not a duplicitous person. He's got a hell of a lot of loyalty, you know. But, you know, like any other person, you know, he's imbued with his own kind of stories and reasoning. And, uh, for somebody who he's going after, he seems like a bad guy. For somebody who he's protecting, he seems like a good guy. So it's really kind of a Rashomon thing. It's up to you what you think. That's why we have 12 jurors. You know, and I, and I hope kind of the show is a little bit about, you know, nobody's good. Nobody's bad. You know, people are people. And, and it's interesting to look at them from all different angles. Kind of a pan-determined viewpoint rather than self-determined. One thing I like that you said in there, and this is probably why the, the uh, policemen that you run into or that work on the show tell you this, you may not like what, as, as, as a policeman, you may not like what he does or says, but you know where you stand with him because he's, he's, he's being honest with you. Yeah, yeah. And who doesn't like that? Well, I, I certainly do. I guess some people like to. Yeah, I, I, you know, well, I think the only thing to do around here is get better, and you know, you need input. Well, you mentioned Dick Wolf Honestly. earlier. I wanted to ask about him. Uh, been working in television forever. Just went into the TV Hall of Fame last year as an inductee. What yeah. what makes him successful? Now that you've worked for him for a little while, what makes him successful? Why is he so good at what he does? Well, I, I, that is, again, something I could never answer, but I can tell you some things that I have noticed about him that I find extraordinary and unique to him of the people I've worked with. And I noticed this when we did that backdoor pilot. Um, he has a specific kind of genius, in my opinion, that he's able to understand how to present a moment, a scene, an episode, an entire series in a macro kind of a way, understanding how to publish, uh, publicize it, how to promote it, how to write it, all these kind of big things in order to sell something and, and let it continue to be on the air and be enjoyed by a lot of people, which is the only way it stays on the air. But then at the other side, 
he's able to get into the most minute kind of micro things, it, like a, a, a choice of an actor in a moment, in a scene. And just like that, he's very, he's, he's got such a full understanding of the shows. You know, I can understand how to do a moment, and I can do those kind of things, and I can create a role over a series of episodes and things like that. But the other stuff on top of that, and to meet somebody who's able to do the two for several different characters and several different shows, I find it kind of, it's really extraordinary. And I would suspect, if that's not the key, it's certainly uh, a heck of a thing to have in your bag of tricks. You know, one thing I've noticed over the years, and this is the case on your show as well, most of your good executive producers have, a, in TV at least, have a writing background, not a producing background, and that's the case with Dick Wolf. I, I've always heard people talk about TV is a writer's medium, film is more of a director's medium, and you've done both. Would you agree with that? Well, I mean, what I have always said is, you know, you can have a great script and make a really bad movie. And, but you can't have a bad script to make a good movie. So I do think that the foundation of anything is the script. Or if it's, even if you do something with a lot of improv, it's the idea, it's the concept. And uh, so I could agree with that, but I think both of them are really writers' meetings. But they're all collaborative, you know? Gosh, you can have a great script in a, in, a, in a TV show, and the actors and the director can mess it up, but the, the same holds for a, for a movie. I would imagine, too, I just asked Kevin Bacon this last week, and I want to ask you, since you're the lead on this, I had heard other people say over the years that from an acting standpoint, not other jobs, you know, there's a lot of hard jobs, construction and, and police officers, real police officers and so forth, but as an actor, the single hardest job seems to be not theater, not film, not comedies, but being the lead on a drama because of just the sheer number of hours and the weight of that. And he agreed with that. Would, is that something you would agree with now that you've done it a little while? Uh, yeah, it's a it's a lot of work. It, it's a it's a it's a lot of work. And uh, I think in the first season I had four days off, uh, and. Uh, you know, and then there's a lot of lines to learn. And, uh, you know, it's, it's also kind of, you know, actor, I, you like to marinate and have time and, and be able to carve things out. And so it's a different thing. You know, I'm, I'm shooting one and then starting the next, you know, in the afternoon. And, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a lot of business in this kind of show business television so it's uh it's 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 exhilarating but it's exhausting so you know, no, just, no complaints though right no I don't have any complaints no I, I'm, I feel I feel very lucky I also feel very happy you know I mean there's a plenty of things that you know I mean I shooting in Chicago a great city but you know my family lives in Malibu so I kind of miss them. Gets a little lonely sometimes, uh, and you know, just nice to have your wife and kids around. But uh, uh, you know, we get to visit and and do things. But it's a very, I find myself having to be very, 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 very focused. And uh, we'll see. Next, next, you know, maybe I'll be able to relax a little more next year. We'll see. Yeah, sometimes being away for, I mean, even though it's bad on, you know, you, you want to be with your family, sometimes, it, like you say, it's good because you could just completely focus on the work. It's like when, when um, let's say, a football team, you know, they go on the road and, and they're just secluded from their family for a couple of days, or especially when they go up to training camp, they're, you know, they're just totally focused and don't have their families around. And that can be a good thing because you don't have the, the, uh, the dual lives going there. It can, it can be a good thing. It can also be, uh, it, you know, you have to keep but you know for me it's like I guess the way I look at it I mean I don't want to get too philosophical but you know I'm me and then I have one of the roles the major role I play is Jason Begay 
And I think there's a little difference between me and Jason Begay. And then Jason Begay plays Hank Voigt. And, and what I try to do, and one of the, the traps of having all that time to focus, is you can get a little lost from you, yourself. And I, and, and I think that that's the, the wellspring of everything I have. And so I, I try, you know, when I get a little bit of a break on the weekend, the, the first thing I do is kind of just lay there and just be, not be Jason, not be an actor, not be any, just kind of get back home, you know, in the, in the true sense of that. And that, that, that's kind of my, that, that's, that's the thing that I have to do, you know, but it can, it can, you can get, you can get a little lost, you know, get, and you don't realize it's happening, but you start, you know, there's an influence. I, I influence Void, Void influences me. Sometimes, you know, he might creep in a little bit too much. I'm not saying I'm going around beating people up in Chicago, but uh, <laughs> you I can get prickly. You that direction, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no. You worked no. a long time to get to this point where you're the lead on your own show. What was it like those years where you're, you're that, that guest star of the week? What, what's that mentality as an actor coming in, always being you know, the new guy or, or the guy that's just coming in for a week or two? What's that life like? I, you know, there's a lot to recommend it, frankly. Um, you know, I, I, I try to look at, you know, if I, if I find a script that's interesting or somebody says, you know, we want you to do this role, and I look at it and I say, I can do that, I try to go in with the attitude that I'm trying to help this show. You know, these guys are working hard and they're trying to, to do something good. Whatever their purpose is, they want to make it a good show. And so I, I just try to be, I've always tried to be helpful. But the nice thing about it is it's, it's not that big of a commitment. I have a tendency, I, have a, I, I, don't, I, I, I don't mind being lazy. You know, I, have a, I don't get bored. I've got a nice life. So the other side, and I don't miss it, but I, I never, I always appreciated the fact that I was lucky enough to be able to make a living, and I'm a fairly simple guy, and uh, and and have a lot of free time to spend with my wife and children, and 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 pursue the things that are interesting to me, you know, outside of acting, and uh, you know, even though this is a terrific job, you know, I'm not able to do a lot of the other things I could do with the other kind of life. So I guess now that I think of it. You know, I just, I, I don't really, I try to stay in this moment and do what I'm doing when I'm doing it and uh, and kind of paint the picture to find out what it looks like. And uh, so it, 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 it's all good. It's all good. It's, it's just, it's just part of my life. So I guess I don't, I'm not, I wasn't always, oh, I got to get this. I got to do that. I, I want to, you know, you know. More, I just, you know, I just try to do the best I can, you know, with the job that I'm responsible for doing. Yeah. Well, we really appreciate your time today, and you've done something already that almost, well, very, very few shows do, and that's go to a second season. And I feel like you're going to have a bunch of them. So, congratulations on that. I hope you have a great summer. I think so too. Thank appreciate you. your time. Most of them don't even get the first season, right? That's right. There's so few that make Thanks, it to the first, but even, even a tiny percentage of those get to the second. But that, you know what I'm saying? You look at that's what I think about. It's like, you know, that's am – I, am I talking too much? No, here, listen. Here you are. It's this moment right now. You make a show, and you everybody wants their pilot to get picked up, Right? So they pick up the pilot and they give you seven or thirteen episodes or whatever. I mean, that's a huge success. And now a second season. You know, and I just try to like, oh, I, you know, I'm just kind of sitting down having a piece of cake right now. That's good. We're doing something right. You know, and we'll see what happens next. Maybe, you know, but I, I, I am determined and I try to, you know, get everybody on the same page that 
you know, if we're not getting better, we're probably getting worse. So how do we get better? How do we get better and, and continue and continue? And then I think we'll go on, maybe win awards. Who knows? We'll find out. You know, yep. but uh, see soon. We just we'll have, have a great summer. You too. Appreciate your time.